transparent colors will allow a light source to shine through them. White is reflective and opaque, meaning it will reflect this light source and go through the subsequent layers. In this case, I'm going to use magenta, yellow, and magenta again, so that your eye would see an orange mixture, but with a slight red to it. So it's going to be a reddish orange. On this side, if I chose magenta, yellow, and magenta, except that they were opaque, they had white in them, what would happen in the theory I'm proposing is that light would hit the first layer and bounce off. It would scatter if it was thin enough, but it would never get to those lower layers and it lacks luster. It just goes flat and dull. So when you use opaques, you're working with colors that the light can't get through and vibrate. When I look through transparent colors, you'll get a lot more sheen or glint or sparkle, I think, out of the paint. And the eye over here is just going to see a pink because magenta with white in it will be pink. So if we put that theory to test, it should work out the same on a piece of board. And I've chosen blackboard just to isolate the area I'm talking about. And remembering my diagram, if I took some magenta, put it on transparent, it won't show up on this black surface as well. But if I put it on top of a white surface, it will show up with a lot more vibrancy. So I want the light to go through that magenta layer, hit the white and bounce off. We're already starting to lose it here and I might even have to put a little circle to remind you where that's taking place. I'm going to also take some of this magenta and add white to it. Now I'm going to make a magenta white mixture. That I can leave uncircled. I'm sure we'll see it. Now that I've used a hair dryer to dry this coat off, I'm going to take yellow. And if I put yellow on top of this mixture which has a black base, and I'll go to the trouble of making a yellow that has a white content to it. So I'm adding white to my yellow. And I'm going to put that on top of this layer. It's covered very well. It's bright. But we're not seeing any of the pink through it except where I left it. I'll go and put some yellow that doesn't have any white on top of this color. And we're starting to get an orange feeling. Again, it's wet, so we'll let it dry but I'm trying to take care of some of that pink and cover most of it, or the magenta, I mean. I just stay with the magenta straight out of the tube or the jar. I'll put it on top. There's a lot of glow to that. I can put it on here, and you can see that we're not seeing much at that end. If I take the magenta that has white in it and put it on top of that yellow, I'm not trying to put it on thick, I'm just trying to put it on even. That's the color I see, and that's the solution to our problem. I think I'd call that pink, and I'd call this, well, we'll let it dry and see if we get that red-orange feel. So I think we've addressed the theory that transparent colors over white show a little bit of vibrancy and color variations. This is a flat color. It's going to be opaque. It's going to cover the previous coat. And on top of black, not very much shows. And this is why I prefer using transparent colors over white. I have more control, I get more iridescence, I get more variation in color with a lot less work and a lot less drying time.